Hello, Rank Team video. Today we're going to take a look at the Rank 1 team in the world. Also, currently, while I'm recording, it's still the Rank 1 team in the world for the Open Ultra League. The player that achieved this is coming from Japan, I think, and he played both the current Love Cup as well as the Ultra League. With this team here, I went, I think, 26 and 9, which is very, very decent as well. Of course, currently, I'm a little bit lower Edo because I tanked on purpose during the Go Battle Day as I was on the vacation, but still, um, in this Edo range, now I think I'm getting up to like 2600 right now it's still something where a lot of people are currently standing in so like it's something that at least you can see as well how it is against this kind of meta um, right now, of course, I'm trying to climb again a little bit, but we're going to have full Master League the next week, which is going to be very interesting. I bet, like, the viewer count going to go down. But if you enjoyed this content here, at least, please leave a like on the video, and I would appreciate it a lot. Here we see an Aggron. Actually, has haste a quite a few Aggrons in this kind of meta in the lower ranks here, but um, we will see here, of course, that our Galarian Stunfisk, which is going to be, at least in my opinion, the closer for this team, going to have a great time against it as we see a warring coming back in here we can go ahead go for the rock slide going to get some decent damage against them they're going to forfeit already this team has one issue i feel like it's going to be i mean ghost types in general not really like the normal ghost types but like special ghost types while well, i mean with that travelant and jellicent both of them have typings that can beat the Pokemon that you have also in the back there. Like normal ghost type, like Giratina, no issue at all. Both of the Pokemon in the back are very good against it. But both Trevenant as well as Jellicent can be an issue for this team here, as you kind of don't really have good answers for them, either offensively or defensively there in the back, which can be a little bit of an issue, but wasn't too big of a deal for me. I think I had one game against Jellicent where I just quit out immediately because I didn't really have any positioning there. So, um, yeah. That's it. Of course, I cannot showcase all the games. I went through all of them and to see like how many I won, how many I lost. And it was uh, around two hours of gameplay. So like that's not something I'm going to showcase at all. But still, this team worked out really, really well. And I feel like I can maybe in include sometimes more the um, win rate as well. I feel like that's something interesting to note for a team. For this team here, I think it was like 74.3% um, or something, which is kind of nice. As we see here, the opponent going for some cross chop baits. Very good baits by the opponent. Either my opponent doesn't have a second charge move or they're just like baiting a lot. Um, which is good for them because um, now they will be able to go for one charge move here. Actually, I get there first, but I think they're going to survive that. Exactly, they're going to survive that one. They can go for one blast burn here. They still need to go for another charge move afterwards because they're not shadow. Shadow would most likely knock me out here, but I also would have knocked out them. So here we will see the Dragon Claw coming through. Not going to knock me out here. I will try to farm all the way down, try to get to two moves, but didn't work out. We see the Ox now against the Machamp, and sadly, because they baited so much, they're going to get to another charge move here, which is going to be the Cross Chop. So not too bad. We're going to be able to survive it. We can go ahead, go for another charge move here as well. Psycho Boost coming through, and we will be able to knock them out. Next opponent coming in. Let's see what they're going to have here. They're going to have a buck pose already. Like the, oh, I think there was like the lantern pose, but they didn't have the lantern in the end. Very funny. We see the Trevenant coming in here. Trevenant, again, one of the biggest issues for this team. Also, note, I think they're going to run um, normal wall rain. I think you don't need shadow wall rain. I think normal wall rain is currently even preferred in the open ultra league just because of the extra bulk that you have. So if you don't have a shadow wall like I do here, um, don't be uh, shy to use the normal version of it definitely uh, most likely even the better version of it in general i'm actually going to know throw there i think i would have seen people i'm not sure maybe i just made a mistake there could be the case um didn't really pay too much attention to the battles as well because they're kind of lower edo range and yeah it's 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 definitely easier here the thing that i noticed the most were actually not really that they don't have the pokemon but that they either don't have the correct moves or don't know how to play the Pokemon, which is more the issue. So it's not really an accessibility issue, it's more like, most likely a knowledge issue. Like, Pokemon Go PvP is a lot around knowledge and, like, that's basically the main part of it. So if you don't know certain matchups, if you don't know when to bait, if you don't know when to catch, then you are um, definitely into something into that Edo range here because it's kind of important for the gameplay there. So um, it was a lot of times very predictable, for example, when opponent threw, they basically threw immediately when they got the move the entire time, which was then for me easy to catch moves, which is something that I just noticed when I playing was playing the games. It was definitely a lot easier um, in terms of catching moves, in terms of throwing moves, in terms of just trying to position yourself for the game itself was way easier for like lower 
rating here as you can see like 2350 here those were like earlier games i played this for seven sets so like i went pretty nice up with that team and make sure you check what my current rank is um for this team i got up to 2540 now so yeah i still have my sets to do for today though so like i am mostly going to still play this team or something else i don't know but yeah, we're going to have Master League tomorrow, going to be an interesting one. This is going to be my, at least, my final Ultra League video for it. There's going to be another Ultra League video later on around a space pick that I got sent while I was on vacation. But here we're going to see the Earthquake coming through. We will see that we can go ahead and go for our own Earthquake here. This one will do a ton of damage, knocking them out. We see the Charizard coming back in here. It's a Shadow version. Maybe they want to shield the Icicle Spear, which is going to hurt them a lot. Let's see. They do want to shield it, which is amazing for us. We're going to swap out here actually into a Deoxys. As um, I kind of want to keep my Warren alive for the Giratina here. As we see, the opponent can just most likely just farm us all the way down. Should have went for Rockside here, I think. Rockside would have been the play because it's very likely that they're going to farm me all the way down. But never mind, we can just also just go ahead and spam those charge moves here. Psycho Boost already got them around half of its health, and we can even get to another one. So I guess it might have been even more beneficial to go just straight Psycho Boost here, putting them basically into needy red health. I think it's like around 33% here. We will be able to take those Dragon Claws, which means they're most likely going to run Dragon Claw plus the. Um, oh, Shadow Sneak, actually, never mind. Okay, I get that. They just went blind for the Dragon Claw there. But what we're going to do here is because they have a Charizard in the back, we're going to just over farm and just go straight for Rockside. I wanted to actually not even catch, like, let them catch the move here, which is even better for us. But I actually just wanted to go straight for Rockside against Giratina. Giratina doesn't really have a lot of pressure with their fast moves or, like, charge moves against me anyway. So going straight for Rockside would have been definitely a way to go there. Next opponent, um, Swampert is also a little bit of a trickier one. Swampert is very decent in against the lead as well. It's a very neutral matchup here. But the issue is, of course, that you're going to debuff yourself in the process because your only neutral charge move here is going to be the Psycho Boost, which is going to hurt them a lot, though. Um, but what we're going to see here is that we're going to try to most likely catch the next move on our War Rain. We see the Hydro King coming through. They basically throw immediately when they get that. So we're going to definitely take advantage of this. This is basically what I mean with that. It was very obvious that they're going to throw the Hydro King there. We were able to catch. And we will be able to, we will be able to go for another charge move here as well. But I think I may misplay this one as well. Thought they were only no actually they're going to go ahead and go for the hydro can now yeah they're actually going to bait me here and i thought i can farm them down this was like only like four in between then again and it was actually already an earthquake which was really annoying so actually a good play by my opponent there didn't really count that much and now we're going to face a horrible next pokemon to deal with and i think we're going to actually lose this matchup as well because of the earthquake there and nice bait by the opponent but um yeah, they're going to actually still get to another charge move here. Like, everything basically worked against me here. That was very annoying. But even if we got the move off there, there was no chance that we would have had a chance against the Blaster. So it was a very interesting um, ABA team there from the opponent that was pretty weak against any, like any grass type lead, like a Venusaur. Like, it would have completely destroyed the opponent. But yeah, weird teams. Uh, we will see here the Giratina against you here as well, which is going to actually go ahead for the ancient power ancient power is a very strong move I actually like ancient power a little bit more but maybe not with dragon breath as a fast move here we will be able to farm them all the way down which is nice and we see the obstacle coming back in which is going to have to take an earthquake here to its face earthquake going to do a lot of damage but actually going to get shielded which might be even better for us we can go ahead go into our deoxys just counter them down counter doing a ton of damage here of course double super effective and we can align our pokemon perfectly going to shield up the night slash of course as this is going to hurt after a while we will be able to go ahead and go for our own rock side, which should knock them out, and we can see whatever they have in the back now. And it's going to be a Venusaur. I maybe misplay this game here, but I have to see. We will be able to go for one cycle boost here, basically forcing the shield, I guess. As they um I can go for another cycle boost now, catching the move. And I feel like one cycle boost will be enough to knock them out at this range, not gonna lie. Cycle boost, super effective, stab, and also the opponent is shadow. So I thought I would still get to the rock side here, by the way. But I don't, so I'm going to over farm a little bit, and I could have and should have most likely already thrown my charge move here. I don't know why I didn't, so that's kind of wild. Um, don't know why I double up on Psycho Boost here. Literally have no idea why. Actually, yeah, it does knock them out. Okay, I guess I guess it was the correct play then for me. Um, actually, thought it would do way more. Not gonna lie, but yeah, next opponent here, we're going to see a uh, Muck against us. Muck is going to be an interesting one, something that I don't really want to face. I can go for one Psycho Boost and then dip. The Muck has access to the move Dark Pulse, which would be super effective, and also has the access to the move uh, Thunder Punch, which would be super effective against Wall Rain. 
Here we will be able to bait out the opponent's Surfetch, which is going to be very nice for us because we really don't want to have the Surfetch against our Galarian Stunfisk later on, as they very likely still could have a double fighting team, which might be a little bit annoying, but we will find out later. Lights is coming through. I'm going to shield this move up because it would have hurt a little bit more, I think, than the Dark Pulse. I guess I can go for one charge move here, going to go for the Psycho Boost. I'm going to swap out into my um, Galarian Stunfisk here, catching the Dark Pulse, which was amazing for me. As we face a Charizard in the mech. This is not the Pokemon that I expected, but definitely a Pokemon that I like to see here. We see the Rock Side going to do some nice damage here, as we will be able to go ahead and actually go and sh not shielding this up. It's going to be a Dragon Claw, that's amazing. Now I can shield up and I think I can farm all the way down, which will allow me to go for Earthquakes against the opponent's muck, and I think they're already forfeiting here anyway, exactly goodbye there. So, good game there, easy one. Next opponent, Alolan muck. So, first normal muck, now we have the Alolan version. This one is running also Poison Jab here. I'm gonna go for one charge more first, just to soften them up a little bit. And go into my wall right now, which should put them into range for one Icicle Spear already. So, um, softening up Pokemon can help you out a lot. We will see the Acid Spray coming through, which you're going to have to shield the next charge move then afterwards. But here we're gonna get the shield advantage. And they're actually just going to go for Acid Spray so they can farm you all the way down with their... Um, Machamp, which I could have done anyway, so that's amazing for us. We can go ahead, go into our Deoxys. I sometimes just shield here. Just in case they're running like some like return here for this Pokemon or um, payback, which would have been super effective. But after seeing the rocks out here, I don't really have to shield again, so I'm fine with that one. I can just go ahead, farm them all the way down, and we will see the opponent coming into a Cresselia. Meaning our Stunfisk is pretty valuable. Um, should definitely keep my Stunfisk alive here. We're going to be a Grass Knot coming through as we see that we can go ahead and go for Earthquakes here, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna go straight for the Earthquake here, I guess. It's a little bit tricky. Cresselia is actually not too bad against Galarian Stunfisk because of the neutral Grass Knot and Cresselia having an insane stat product. Literally the best stat product, I think, out of any meta. Um, where it's like so above everything else. It's wild and still having great moves. It's it's, it's really cool. Like Cresselia is such a strong Pokemon and such an easy Pokemon to get as well. We see the Earthquake getting shielded here, which was a smart move by the opponent. And I am um, not really paying attention too much to the battles here, which will cost me the game because I didn't go for the Earthquake here. They're going to be able to go for one Dark Pulse. And because like now there's nothing I can do anymore. I completely didn't really pay too much attention to it all. And they can go ahead and make a great play there with swapping in the muck and still having a move stored there to knock me out. But that was a wild one. I could have definitely won this if I played just better, but um, so be it. So yeah, you at least see also some of my losses here, which is good, I guess, as well. As we see the next opponent come in here, you already see like Legend 2525 rating. This was already a little bit later. It's also then the last battle. I think I cut just out in the middle of it because I think I like this battle. I don't know what actually happened in this battle though. We'll see here the Blastman coming through from the opponent. Very nice for us as we can go ahead and go for the Rock side here. Rock side going to get shielded. We can go ahead and go for our Warren. We see the opponent's Warren coming through and we can just go for the Earthquake straight away. Earthquake going to do some nice damage here, going to be forcing the no shield anyway because it's very likely that they just want to keep the shield life there as we see the opponent's Earthquake coming through. I can Earthquake them back here as well, allowing me to either knock them out or get the final shield by the opponent and we're going to knock them out, which is nice. So Warren Mirror, we already won, let's see what we're going to face, we're going to face the Charizard again. They're going to go for one charge move, I'm actually going to shield this move up because I think I get them into a range where I can farm them down otherwise. But sadly, they're going to get to another charge move way faster than I thought they would get to. So, we have to shield here again. We see the uh, move coming through now. It's going to be the Icicle Spear. Going to be some nice damage. Hopefully, we're going to try to catch the move, but actually didn't work out. We're still going to have now a Trevenant to face with. And Trevenant is, of course, the worst answer now for the Pokemon that I have left. Um, we're still going to be able to go for some Rockside damage here at least. And we can take one Shadow Ball pretty easily. But we will have to go for the rock side here and hopefully get the shield maybe because I think we have an Icicle Spear stored on our Warren, but it has a 1 HP, which is the issue. Here I think my opponent lagged a little bit, allowing me to get to another charge move, which is nice for me. But also what is nice for me as well is that they have to still throw here. And we will be able to go into our Deoxys because I cannot really go into our Warren yet. We have to hope that they're going to knock me out here first. They're going to go for the Seed Bomb Bait and this is not enough. We will be able to knock them out 
or not? They're going to still get you another charge move. Do they have two moves stored? They do not. And we win with a 1 HP and dream with all war right in the back. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the rank 1 in the world team, which is very cool to see. And yeah, see you later for another fun video for the Open World League and then for the Master League tomorrow. Bye.